Hi, in this video we are going to see some important questions that can be asked from this region that is the cerebral cortex. So the frequently asked questions are what are the functional areas of the cerebral cortex and explain the functions of the different lobes of the cerebral cortex. So in this video we will be primarily concerned with the first question that is functional areas of the cerebral cortex and we will be describing the functions of just one lobe here that is the frontal lobe. Okay. So this, this question is usually asked as a diagram based question where you will be asked to depict the fu important functional areas on a diagram. So for that we can first draw the lateral surface of the cerebrum and uh, briefly show the cerebellum as well as the brain stem. And then you can first mark the central sulcus as well as the parieto occipital sulcus. See this is the central sulcus and this is the parieto occipital sulcus. Now we know the different lobes of the brain. In front of the central sulcus we have got the frontal lobe. And uh, behind this central sulcus, we've got the parietal lobe. And then we've got the other two lobes, which are the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe. Okay, so these are, this is a major division of the cortex into lobes. Now we'll see how these are further divided into the different broad main areas. So we know that the frontal lobe is primarily concerned with the motor activity. So it will contain all the motor areas. So we've got broad main area 4, which is primary motor cortex. And then we've got motor area 6, that is the premotor cortex, area 8, which is a frontal eye field, and area 44 and 45, which is a Broca's area. So these are the important areas in the frontal lobe. Now there's another region in this frontal lobe, and this is called the prefrontal cortex. Now this is involved, this, this, this area has got a huge importance in determining the behavior of human beings. Now we know that parietal lobe is primarily concerned with the sensory activities. So it will contain mainly the sensory areas. So which are the sensory areas? We've got 1, 2 and 3 which are the primary sensory areas. And then we've got area 5 and 7 which are the sensory association areas. Okay. Now moving on to the occipital lobe. We know occipital lobe is concerned with vision. So area 17 is the primary visual cortex and area 18 and 19 are the visual association areas. Finally, the temporal lobe is concerned with audition. So the areas here will be 44 and 42, which is a primary auditory area and area 22, which is a Wernicke's area. So these are the different important broad main areas that are, be, that are to be depicted. Now we'll see the functions of the frontal lobe. So as I said before, frontal lobe is an area which is present in front of the central sulcus. So in the introduction, whenever the whenever an answer is written, you have to first start with an introduction as well as a brief physiological anatomy. So here in the introduction, you can write that the, the, the cerebral hemispheres are divided into four lobes, which are frontal, temporal, parietal and occipital. And then briefly mention is location. That frontal lobe is present in front of the central sulcus and above the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. So that is the location of the frontal lobe. Then we can move on to explain the different areas of the frontal lobe. So, on the basis of function, the frontal lobe is subdivided into two main areas. One is this precentral cortex and other is the prefrontal cortex. Now, precentral cortex is further divided into the primary motor area, that is area 4, the premotor area, which is area 6, and we've also got areas 8, 44 and 45, and the supplementary motor areas. So these are the important uh, areas of the precentral cortex. Now we will see the function of each of these areas. So now we will see the function of the primary motor area. So primary motor area as the name suggests it is the main area which is responsible for the motor functions. So how is this possible? That is because we have got something known as a motor homunculus. What is motor homunculus? See it is in this area that the different regions of our uh, body is represented on this homunculus. See, you can see that this is more or less in an inverted fashion. Here you have got the legs and you have got the trunk and the hands and then we have got the face and the tongue. So first, the what was motor homunculus? It is a representation of different parts of the body on the in this on this primary motor area. Secondly, it is uh, inverted and the area of representation is directly proportional to the function of the group. See here you can see that the fingers have got more representation than the trunk. Okay, So that is meant by motor homunculus. And it is this area which is primarily responsible for the initiation of voluntary movements as well as initiation of speech. So this is a, these are different functions of the primary motor area. 
the other two motor areas that we have are the pre-motor area and the supplementary motor area. So here also the main function is motor function but their role is a bit different. Pre-motor area is re responsible for the integration of the different voluntary movements and it is also responsible for setting the posture at the start of a planned movement. So basically it helps the primary motor area to do its function. It provides that background or sets the posture for that motor activity. Next is the supplementary motor area which works in association with the pre-motor area and organizes and plans the motor sequence. So suppose we have to do something, the first, there will be first a motor image formed which includes all the different sequences of muscle movements that are, be, that are to be done and this is worked out by the supplementary motor area. Pre-motor area sets the posture and this information is con conveyed to the primary motor cortex. So that is how we are able to do the different motor activities, right? Next, we've got the other important areas like frontal eye field, which is Broadman area 8, as well as an area for speech, which is a Broca's motor speech area, area 44 and 45. Okay. So the frontal eye field is responsible for the control of eye movements, just as the name suggests. See, frontal means it's present on the frontal lobe, eye field. So it is mainly responsible for the eye movements. Next, we've got the Broca's motor speech area. So here also it is responsible for the motor part of speech. So, it means it is responsible for the production of voice because it is this area that con mainly controls the muscles of the lips, tongue, pharynx and larynx. Okay? So, it is responsible for articulation of speech. So, these are the important functions of the other two areas, frontal eye field as well as Broca's motor speech area. So, that will conclude our pre-central cortex but as I said before, we have got another important area which is the prefrontal cortex. So, what are the functions of the prefrontal cortex? So, prefrontal cortex is considered as the center for planned action. Why is it called the center for planned action? See, that is because it works in close association with the motor cortex and plans the complex patterns and sequences of motor movements. So, that is why it is called the center for planned actions. Next, it is also considered as a center for higher functions. Why? That is because uh, it is responsible for these higher functions like emotions, learning, memory, all this are being controlled by these uh, prefrontal cortex. Moreover, you know, we've got different autonomic changes that occur during emo emotional conditions, right? That is because of the connection of the prefrontal cortex with the hypothalamus and the brainstem. Next important function, next important uh, role is that it is the seat of intelligence. Why is it called the seat of intelligence? because short term memories are registered in the prefrontal cortex. So it is a prefrontal cortex that helps us to uh, keep in track of the different bits of information and also helps us to recall this information. That is why it is called the seat of intelligence. Next, it is the, it, the main area for control of intellectual activities. Why? That is because it has, uh, the prefrontal cortex has the ability to plan the future. It allows the person to concentrate on a central theme of thought and it also helps in the depth and abstractness of thought. So that is why because it, uh, it determines how a patient think and help them to concentrate, it is, called the, it is called the area for the center for intellectual activities. So these are the major functions of the prefrontal cortex. So just to revise, here we have seen so, to revise, we have seen the different areas which are the of the, of the frontal lobe. First, we have got the pre-central cortex which consists of the primary motor cortex. Area 6 which is the pre-motor cortex. Area 8 which is the frontal eye field. And 44 and 45 which are the Broca's area. And then we have got the prefrontal cortex which is the seat of intelligence, the area for plant actions. It is the area for higher functions. So, we have seen the different functions of each of these areas. Okay. Now we will see some applied aspects. So what happens if there is a lesion in the motor cortex of this frontal lobe? What will happen? Obviously there will be a motor weakness and it will be on the contralateral part. Why? Because we said that the right half of the brain will control the left part of the body whereas the left part of the brain will control the right half of the body. So there will be motor weakness on the contralateral part. And what is that weakness called? It can either be a paresis or a plegia. What is meant by paresis? If the severity of the lesion is less, then there can be a slight decrease in the motor function. Whereas if it is severely, if the lesion is uh, more severe, then there will be total paralysis of that area and that is called plegia. 
So if just one limb is affected, it is called monoparesis. If uh, one limb, one upper limb and lower limb is affected, it is called hemiparesis or hemiplegia. If all the four limbs are affected, it is called quadriparesis or quadriplegia. So depending on the severity of the lesion, you can have different, uh, different disorders. Okay. Next, suppose we've got a lesion on the frontal eye field. So we know that this frontal eye field is responsible for the movements of the eye. Right? So if there's a lesion there, the eyes will be turned towards the affected side and also the conjugate movements of the eye will be absent. So this is what happens if there's a lesion in the frontal eye field. Next area is a Broca's area. So suppose there's a lesion in the Broca's region, it is called Broca's aphasia. Okay? Basically aphasia means disorder of speech. So here the Broca's aphasia is called a motor uh, defect or motor aphasia. Why? Because the person will be able to understand what you say, but he will not be able to articulate the speech. Okay, so that is why it is called motor aphasia or non-fluent aphasia. Next important uh, applied aspect is frontal lobe syndrome. See, we had said that we've got a prefrontal cortex which is responsible for the higher functions. So, if there's a lesion there, we we'll, we know uh, we'll have what is known as a frontal lobe syndrome, and the symptoms of this frontal lobe syndrome are there will be flight of ideas, there will be emotional instability, euphoria, loss of moral and social sense, functional abnormalities, impairment of memory, lack of initiative and marked depression as well as lack of attention and concentration. So you can remember this like this, feel, fill. That means a person with frontal lobe syndrome will always feel, fill, F-E-E-L, F-I-L-L. -L. Okay, so that's a mnemonic that by which you can remember that. Okay, so these are the applied aspects of the frontal lobe. So to summarize, here we first seen the different functional areas and then we saw the functions of the frontal lobe. So when you have to say the functions of the frontal lobe, you can uh, first mention the precentral cortex and the different areas there and then the prefrontal cortex. You can also supplement your answers with uh, diagrams wherein you can mark the different Bodman areas and also maybe draw the motor homework list to complete the answer. So that's all. Thank you.